Now let's stay with that story. Omicron by any other name is still Omicron. The so-called Kraken variant is being called the most transmissible yet. But scientists in South Africa have been at pains to reassure the population that there's no need to panic. They're saying if anyone wants to take extra precautions, vaccine boosters are still available. But it's not very likely that we'll see high levels of infection or hospitalizations in South Africa because of the level of population immunity here. Let's discuss this further now with Professor Tulio de Oliveira, the director of the Center for Epidemic Response and innovation at Stellenbosch University. And of course, also CRISP, the KZN, UKZN's research, innovation and sequencing platform. And he joins us virtually from the Cape. Uh, Professor, a busy time for you as always when you and your team have led the way in identifying uh, another subvariant in this case. Uh, this is from a sample that was taken on the 27th of December and you um, uh, sequenced it successfully a few days later. From what we know about how this subvariant variant moves how far along are we how in in, in your uh, I, I don't know if there's a way for you to put into words on how quickly the subvariant might now have already moved since uh, a Christmas weekend perhaps uh, here in South Africa where are we at in terms of how it's moved okay yeah thank you and and good evening for all your viewers yeah and I just saw the, the interview of my colleague and friend, Professor Salima Abidu Karim. Yeah. And just to start that, that I absolutely agree what he mentioned. Yeah. There is some confusion, especially in the name. This is still Omicron. It's just mm. a sub lineage. This name, Kraken, that mm. was a scientist that gave the name without any endorsement of the World Health Organization or any official um, me, uh, scientific way is not a valid name. It's a sub-lineage of Omicron, yeah, as we had hundreds, yeah, mm -hmm. not only in South Africa, but in the world, yeah. And then just to be specific to your question, how fast that that that's moved. So this sub-lineage of Omicron was originally detected in the east coast of the United States of America. And there it went to dominate all the infections, around 70% in the state of New York. As we speak, it has been founded in 35 countries around the world. Yeah, We have over 5,000 genomes of this uh, 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 sub-lineage of Omicron. They are all public available, as the South African is also is. And from the 5,000 genomes in the world, only one is from South Africa. Africa. And what we found is in our last 100 genomes, only one. So it's at very low prevalence. Yeah. And we do not expect to, even if increase the prevalence in South Africa, to create in any way a wave of that driver hospitalization and that. Yeah. So uh, what we say as scientists that work on that every day and we work during our Christmas and New Year to make sure that we always know what's circulating in South Africa is that we are alert. We know what's circulating in the country, but we are not alarmed and we are not concerned mm -hmm. that we'll cause a big wave of infection. Now, even before festive, we saw some rather alarming pictures and reports coming out of China in terms of uh, a surge in numbers in China and how they were struggling to deal with the impact of it. Uh, and some people might want to put two and five together and say, well, that's happening in China. That means it's going to happen here now. But we're talking about two very different sets of circumstances here in terms of uh, population immunity, aren't we? Yes, you, you you are absolutely right. We are talking about very different things. Yeah, what we had in China for the past three years, there have been severe restrictions, severe lockdown. So, for example, no foreign uh, traveler could go to China or Chinese could travel outside. If they found a handful of cases, they would close the whole city and they would put a strong quarantine and isolation. So it's not surprising that they have a much lower level of population immunity. Yeah? When they release the restrictions, it's not surprising that a big wave of infection come to China. Yeah? And at the moment, our best uh, 
relationship with China and the China scientists and the public is just to support them. A lot of people is dying in China and the world should support China, not discriminate, as the world should have supported South Africa when we discover Omicron and not discriminate. So it's not surprising the high level of infection there. But in South Africa is a very distinct uh, picture. Yeah, we have very high population unit. We have been exposed for the past year for multiple lineages of Omicron. And we also have a good uh, vaccine coverage in the elderly population. And what we are playing for the public, and especially from people that are advanced age, or comorbidity, that's a great time to get a booster. Just make sure that that in case this variant, which we don't expect to cause major havoc or not the one can, we, 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 we can keep it as we are in the last year in our normal life with very little restriction or no restriction. And, and, and in this regard, communication is key. You and your colleagues have, over the last few days, put out state, public statements saying, don't panic. The health department has done the same. And then we see, like today, I was driving and I saw the headline on the lamppost for local newspapers saying, the Kraken has arrived. That really doesn't help matters, whether you're a scientist or ordinary South African that looks to the scientists to lead the way. Scare tactics and fear mongering is not what we need right now because we know far more about coronaviruses now than we did three years ago. And we now know what we need to do to ensure our most vulnerable stay safe. That must be quite frustrating for, for, for you and, and, and your colleagues when that kind of messaging gets out there and gets people running for the hills where we actually should just be sensible. Yes, and that's where the media, the serious media as ENCA, as, as CBC, it has an important role, yeah, and that's why both my colleagues and I will devote so much time to talk to the public about not being in panic or alerted. Unfortunately, we are in a in an era of fake news. Yeah, so for example, even the name of this sub lineage of Omicron Kraken that was a scientist out of the blue that. This decide to give a name. They also have to give names to the last 20 or 30 lineages for nonsense. One of them was called the Centaurus, yeah, that would come and take over the world and didn't happen. And the media picked that, yeah, and then was amplified, yeah. And that's why it's so important, the communication between the serious media, the scientists and the public to understand that it's just Omicron, one sub lineage, as hundreds of them. We have a high population immunity, and it's quite important in South Africa to be detecting this early because now we are alerted and we can make sure that if we see anything unusual, we can act. And, and, and that's what we are doing as a scientific community, but also as a public health committee with the, with the government. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Thank you for uh, your sensible words and educated words, as always, Professor Tulio Dolivera. He is the director of the Center for Epidemic uh, Response and Innovation at Stellenbosch University, as well as KZN, UKZN's Research Innovation and Sequencing Platform, also known as CRISP. Um, and we heard it there from the scientists. There's no need to panic. We know now what to do. Practice uh, basic uh, sanitation and hygiene, as we all learned how to do uh, uh, during our more hectic COVID years. And of course, if you're vulnerable, if you have our vulnerable populations, you have your older population, um, try and ensure you try and get that booster shot just to be rather safe than sorry.